This is the DualSense from PlayStation 5. And this is the portable retro console, R36S. Because of this little console, I have not touched the DualSense from PlayStation 5 for a month. And that means I have not been playing modern games for a whole month. Honestly, I don't even have the desire to go back to them. Let's figure out together why this happened. And at the same time, I tell you about all the pros and cons of this console. As I mentioned it in this video a month ago, I bought a portable console. It comes preloaded with several thousand retro games and cost only $40. It's an incredibly low prices for so many positive emotions and nostalgia. If you want to quickly get acquainted with this console, I recommend you first watch this video with the unboxing of the console. It won't take much time, the video is only 5 minutes long. About the update. This console runs on a Linux Ubuntu-based operating system called ArcOS. You can get detailed information on the GitHub website, where there is a complete description of ArcOS. The developers also release updates there. By the way, when I first turned on the console, an old version of ArcOS was installed. The battery percentage was not displayed on the screen. And there was no volume control indicator. As you can see, now all of this is available thanks to the ArcOS update. Developers are constantly working on it, improving its interface and making it more stable and user-friendly. So, the first thing I did after unpacking was to update the ArcOS operating system. There are several instructions on YouTube on how to do this. For example, you can update using a USB Wi-Fi adapter, which not everyone has. But I'll show you, in my opinion, is the easiest way. I took my old Android smartphone, which supports the modem function via USB cable. I turned on internet sharing on it and connected the console to the second USB port. I remind you that the first USB port is for the charging device. Then I went to the Options section and selected Update. As you can see, after that, the console automatically finds the necessary update. I agree to the terms, and the update started. A few moments later. After some time, the update is complete. Now using the console is much more enjoyable and convenient. Settings and interface. I've already told you about how to perform an update. Now let me share details about accessing the console settings. To do this, press the start button. Here you'll see various parameters for configuration. You can choose and modify emulation settings. Personally, I haven't changed anything here. Everything suits me by default. By the way, to exit a game, you need to press the side reset button. Perhaps this is the main downside and the biggest inconvenience for me, as restarting the console takes some time. But I found a solution and will teach you how to exit a game without rebooting the console. To do this, I hold down the SELECT plus X buttons. This brings up the emulator menu. Then I select CLOSE CONTENT and press the A button. The ArcOS main menu opens. I scroll down and select QUIT RETROARCH. Press the A button again. We have exited the emulator to the main menu. By the way, the PlayStation Portable Game Emulator also allows you to return to the main screen without restarting the console. It can be done very easily. While playing a game, I press the right stick. After that, the emulator window opens. Here, I can save the game, adjust graphic settings, change control settings, and even exit the game and close the emulator. Let's talk about game saves. It's something ingenious. Now I can complete all the unfinished games from my childhood. This is thanks to the fact that I can save any game in the emulator and then return to playing it. Unfortunately, such a privilege is not available on the original Nintendo or Sega. To save, for example, in the Flintstones, you need to hold SELECT plus X and then navigate to the save settings in the emulator and press SAVE. The game is now saved. I can return to playing it at any convenient time. To do this, I'm starting the game again. Press SELECT plus X and choose LOAD. The game loads from the desired moment. It's simple and brilliant. Thus, I can create saves not only in GTA, in Tarzan and other games, but immediately make saves in the emulator. It's very convenient. This is the main advantage, not only on this console, but of all similar consoles with game emulation. Pros and Cons 
Since I touched upon the pros and cons of this console, let me tell you about other strengths and weaknesses that I've discovered over the past month. The second downside is the inability to connect wireless headphones. Now you need to carry another set of headphones besides AirPods. And when the headphones are plugged into the console, holding it becomes somewhat inconvenient. The headphone jack slightly hinders fingers, causing hands to fatigue quickly. The third drawback is game luck, for example, in The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. After playing for a long time and then putting the console to sleep, there's a chance the game may start lagging and freezing. It doesn't happen often, but it's better to save periodically, exit the game and restart the console. However, such behavior is understandable in heavy 3D games. Personally, for me, it's a minor drawback. And overall, complex games like GTA Y City Stories demand too many resources that this budget console doesn't have. So, dealing with low frame rates and stutters and something to accept, as this console isn't designed for demanding games. If you want to play more complex games, it's better to look for an original PSP or invest in something more powerful, like the Ambernic RG405 horizontal or vertical version. Such a console has a more powerful processor, supporting a larger game list, but simple 2D games from Nintendo, Sega and Game Boy work great on this console. And one more downside is that after buying this console, you'll need to get another one, because something will constantly be taking away the first one. For instance, my wife plays it more than I do, even though she has no interest in PlayStation 5 at all. By the way, she actively participated in creating this video. Actually, it's all a joke. Now we're playing The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time together and following the game's plot. And finally, let's talk about the positives. After a month of active use, all buttons and sticks haven't filled, haven't become loose and work well. Nothing broke. During this time, the console was updated once and the battery lasts for 4 or 6 hours of gameplay, depending on the game. From an ergonomic standpoint, I have nothing bad to say. I don't have the smallest hands, but holding the console is comfortable and my hands don't get tired. The key is not to connect headphones, as I mentioned earlier, they are a bit inconvenient. And most importantly, the emotions that this console brings are priceless. For me, as of today, is the best purchase of 2024, and the year has just begun.